Hi everyone, this is Alex from Salmona Place and I am back yet again with another one of my pharmacology lectures. You can find these lectures on our playlist on the YouTube channel www.youtube.com forward slash the Salmonella Place or our website www.salmonellaplace.com. If you have any questions, please give us a shout at info at salmonellaplace.com. That's info at salmonellaplace.com. Today's lecture is going to be on drug formulations. And just so there's no confusion, this is not drug groups. These are what the drug looks like, the different types of drugs, and their ways of administration. This is an exam topic for the students in my school, so please check it out before you go to the exams. It could really help you. I hope you find this interesting and enjoyable and insightful for your studies. So let's get started. The first type of drug formulation I would like to talk about is oral medications. There are several subtypes, the first of which right here is liquids. Now they have several subtypes. For example, solutions are uh, smaller than one micrometer particles which are dissolved in water, H2O. Uh, suspensions are also uh, dissolved in water, but they are particles that are larger than 500 micrometers. Then you have emulsions, which are a mix of liquids. You have syrups, which are sugar-based solutions. And you have elixirs, which are alcoholic-based solutions. Now, um, I just forgot to mention before that oral medications are placed in the mouth and swallowed. Now the next subtype is tablets. They differ from liquids in the fact that they are not flowable, they are solids, and they are discs containing compressed powder. Uh, the first of which are pills. Uh, they are round and they are either coated with sugar or paint. Uh, this is to improve uh, the outside appearance and also to make the pill taste nicer when swallowing. Um, it contains the drug, a binder, a disintegrator, and a lubricant. Uh, there are several types of coated tablets. Um, these are ones that are coated, like I said before, with sugar. These are called draggies, and they're coated, like I said before, for the taste. Uh, you have enteric substances. Uh, these... Uh, dissolve in the alkaline duodenum and they're coated with the enteric substance to prevent um, the uh, disintegration in the acidity of the stomach. Then you have a sustain sustained release. This is by microencapsulation and basically what it means is that the drug is released in small amounts over a longer period of time. Uh, you also have chewable uh, tablets and these are absorbed in the gastric cavity. They're usually given to children um, because it makes it a more fun way to take medicine. Uh, and then you have capsules with gelatin casing. Uh, these dissolve in the stomach and they're hard or soft. The hard ones contain a solid substance and they can be opened and sprinkled on food if you'd rather not uh, swallow them. Or you can have the soft coated uh, gelatin casing that contains a liquid and this is completely sealed. For example, when you have cod liver oil tablets, uh, if you break open that seal, it's not going to taste nice. Uh, next, you have sublingual tablets or sprays. Uh, these are absorbed into the superior vena cava and it avoids the first pass effect of the liver. Uh, similar to these are buccal tablets, and they're absorbed in the oral mucosa. Uh, the last one is the oral osmotic therapeutic system. This is where water enters a semi-permeable membrane, and there is a gap, um, and this is how, where the dissolved drug escapes. So, the next type of uh, medication I would like to talk about is transdermal medication. Dermal meaning skin, trans meaning crossing. 
So what is transdermal medication? It's a continuous supply of lipophilic drugs from an adhesive layer directly into the bloodstream. So if you look at the picture here, you can see the person's arm and you can see directly attached to the skin, there is this plaster. Now, what is in this plaster? I'm going to tell you. Uh, you have either a reservoir controlled or a matrix membrane controlled uh, layer under this plaster, which allows the drug to uh, have a sustained release into the bloodstream. Now, what's the difference? A reservoir controlled um, plaster has the active ingredient in a solution between a backing and a rate controlling membrane. So obviously the plaster would be the backing uh, membrane, but the rate controlling membrane is directly attached to the skin and that allows so much drug per hour to be released into the bloodstream. The matrix membrane controlled uh, plaster is when the solution is in a polymer in direct contact with the skin. Uh, and that for that allows uh, the drug to be directly released as well into the circulatory system. So that was transdermal medication. On to the next one. So everybody, the next slide is vaginal medications. They're used for local irritation, infections, and they can be used also as contraceptives. They come in the form of creams, foams, jellies, and suppositories. Um, creams, it's pretty obvious what they are. Foams, uh, it's like a bath foam. Uh, jellies, um, it's almost like a gel. Um, you know, that's pretty obvious too. And then suppositories, they're actually, actually like... Um, a capsule almost, but it's hard and it's a, um, a preformed um, uh, to, the, to uh, the shape of the vagina. And what you do is just insert it with your fingers and uh, it will dissolve and release the drug in the vagina. So the next medication I'm going to talk about is rectal medication. Now this, uh, we use this type of medication when the oral route, so going through the mouth, is impossible. That is either when the patient is unconscious or you have a young baby that's projectile vomiting and there's no way to get it in through their mouth. Um, what we do is either give a suppository, which we talked about in the previous slide as being uh, a hard capsule, which is preformed to the shape of either the vagina in the previous case, or in this case, the rectum. Um, and it's given also with a vehicle, which is usually some kind of lubricant because it can be a little bit uncomfortable when placing the suppository uh, through the anus into the colon. Um, so yeah, like I said, this is when the oral route's impossible, um, but it's quite a rarely used um, uh, medication. Oh, something I did forget though that is a little bit important, so make a star on this one, is that we also use it when there is local irritation um, or you want to uh, surpass um, the first pass effect of the liver um, or you just want to treat um, the colon itself uh, without uh, giving any systemic symptoms. So it is uh, a good type of medication, it's just rarely used. The next type of medication is ophthalmic medications. As you can see here, it's obviously to do with the eye. Uh, most of these medications are either used to help diagnose a patient, to treat them, or in uh, preventative cases. Uh, the most frequent type of medication we use is eye drops or ointments, patches, isotonic uh, solutions, and also isohydric solutions. Um, these are used because it's very important. The eye is a very sensitive organ, and so we want uh, the pH, but also the consistency of the um, solutions given to be very similar so it doesn't cause irritation and redness. Uh, and the white of the eye. So guys, as you were probably thinking would be the next slide, we're going to talk about optic medications. As you can see, 
This is the ear. Um, now what we do is we locally deposit because we don't want systemic side effects. Uh, usually a liquid, since it's the easiest way to flow. If you notice here, the auditory canal is quite long and we need the liquid to flow even into the, the back of the ear. Um, and we just put it into the external auditory canal. Um, I'm just gonna show you that ends here. So this is for external auditory infections. Um, obviously, we have to get systemic medication if we do have an inner ear infection because it's a lot more difficult to treat locally. Um, something else, uh, I don't know if they do it in your countries and they wasn't mentioned in the lecture, but sometimes we could actually put a drain with medication in rather than just a liquid. And so what happens is the drain is soaked in uh, medication and fills the canal like this and then just a little bit of sticking out here for uh, easy removal. Uh, we leave it in for about 24 hours and then remove it and usually the uh, auditory canal has opened up again because you know when it's infected it swells and closes um, and the patient isn't really feeling any symptoms. So that's just a little extra for you to know because maybe they use that system in your country. Um, so on to the next slide. We're on to the nose uh, and nasal medications. Uh, these are given in a liquid dropper. So you know one of those little bottles that has a pipette. Uh, or you can get it in a spray form. Uh, this has a local effect because we do want to avoid systemic side effects as much as possible, on nasal congestion. This is when the mucosa of the nose and the nasal cavity um, swells and gets um, uh, either infected or irritated, so it's a lot harder to breathe, and therefore uh, usually you find yourself breathing out of your mouth, which uh, as us dental students know is not a good thing. Um, so basically, yeah, if you're feeling like you have a stuffy nose, usually you can get these, um, these medications over the counter, uh, and you just literally insert them here into the nose through the nostrils, um, a couple of times a day, and that should reduce the um, mucosal swelling uh, within a couple of days. So now I'm going to talk about topical, also known as local, cutaneous medication. Cutaneous means uh, on the skin, be it in the hair, on the head, skin on the body, um, skin around the pubic area, it doesn't matter. Uh, now we have different forms of cutaneous medication. These are emollients, lotions, ointments, creams, solutions, soaps, and shampoos, depending on where you are in the body. Uh, these are used to treat local, like I said many times, we want to avoid the systemic side effects, bacterial or fungal infections. Um, they're used to treat or help prevent infection of wounds, um, to help heal burns, uh, dermatitis, or types of rashes. So now I'm going to talk about parenteral medication. Um, para means next to or beside, and enteral means uh, the GI tract or intestines. So as you probably have guessed, uh, this medication avoids the digestive system. Um, it's subcutaneously infused or injected. Um, it has a slow absorption rate with a sustained effect. So that means that the drug, it might be absorbed slowly into the bloodstream, um, but it has a longer working time, which means that you have to take the drug less frequently. Um, the intramuscular route, so when there's a direct injection into the muscle, it has quick absorption because muscles have a large blood supply and it gives a high blood concentration. Uh, intravenous drugs, like as you can see here, you've got an IV, they have an immediate reaction because you can see here that the needle um, is going into um, the circulatory system and that allows the drug to go directly into there, into the site of action. The last type of medication I'm going to talk about in this lecture is inhalation medication. This is deposited directly, so it has a local effect, into the airway. 
and it's given as a liquid or as a dry powder. Here you can see a little girl being administered with an inhaler. Um, it puffs out um, a powder which goes directly back into her trachea and will go down into her lungs right here. Thank you.